so coming to this batch listen just a few minutes i will uh, explore the syllabus what we are going to cover so then i will go with the programming flow uh, see here myself prakash babu having 16 plus years of experience as a trainer the title of the course is core and advanced python first we are going to see the complete python core and advanced python so after that we are going to focus on data structures also okay so parallelly data structures also i am going to take so this is nothing but python and data structures both will be there so the exact duration of this course is 7 weekends 7 weekends will be there plus or minus 1 so as usual and the timings of this session is morning at 10 am every saturday and sunday around 3 hours to 3 and 1/2 hours we will take sometimes if the topic is very easy or doubts clarification session is there means it may extend up to 4 hours also so please be ready to attend that so coming to the next the syllabus core and advanced python in this we have around 4 to 5 modules are there in the first module we are going to discuss about these topics like the complete fundamentals we are going to cover in this first module so like what is mean by python why we need to go for python when compared with other programming languages what benefits are there in this python so how python is very easy when compared with other languages how python is very easy so what is the differences next and after that installation also suppose i want to develop a python application if you want to develop python application definitely you need some softwares right so what are the softwares that are required for developing python application we will try to install all the required softwares including ides also and i will demonstrate then how to execute a python program where we have to save what is the extension how to run directly we can run we don't have any uh, tools like a compiler like other programming languages we don't have any tools of uh, compiler something like that directly we can execute so what is the reason why we have that kind of facility so uh, next keywords identifiers comments what are the data types that are available input output statements operators everything Uh, pattern programming loops iterative statements nested loops and even we are going to give some programs as a assignments also this is the first module we will give maximum priority to the first module why because if you are strong at fundamentals learning remaining modules will become very easy for you that's why we will focus mainly on module 1 so we will take maximum uh, one and a half weekend or two weekends to complete this module 1 then coming to the module 2 it's a very easy module see python by default inbuilt supporting some kind of data structures like a stack queue directly we can write the program we are not required to implement that data structures by our own even linked list also so all these things they are providing support in the form of predefined libraries for that we have top 5 data structures are there like a string list tuple set dictionary have you observed here list and dictionary these are the most commonly used tools in the programming any modern programming if you take any coding challenge if i want to implement if i want to provide solution for that coding challenge compulsory we have to go for either list or dictionary how it will be that part we will see later next and after that in the third module we are going to see functional programming um, functional programming in the sense it is now nowadays it is a very famous what is mean by functional programming very simple sir we will create a function just for your understanding i am taking so we will create a function so you can use this function whenever you require you can use any number of times also so this is called as something like reusability concept how we are achieving reusability in programming in the sense by using functional programming have you observed this function is prepared by the programmer there are some predefined functions also there which is defined inside the system library we can use that function for example in python if you want to calculate factorial directly factorial function is there we are not required to write any explicit code for this by using loops or iteration we have inbuilt functions are there i request everyone to please be on mute 
like that we have a predefined function sir i want to generate a random number so for example i want to generate a otp the for that there is a function called random some functions based on your requirement you can develop by your own those are called as predefined functions some functions you can define by your own for meeting our requirements okay so those are called as user a pre sorry user defined and the functions which are already defined are called as predefined both are there okay so we are going to see how to define the functions what are the predefined functions what are the user defines sir i have one function is there second function is there third function is there so all these three functions are doing so same related activities maybe this is a student related marks student related personal information student related marks information student related sports information have you observed these three functions are providing services to the student why can't we combine this and name it as a student i can say this is nothing but a student module how to create such a type of module i have student module is there faculty module is there management module is there like that different modules can i combine these modules also yes that is called as package that is called as package so how you can able to define the packages with all this terminology whatever we have learned up to this we will create a small mini project mini project in the sense of course we will write from scratch okay maybe student mark list or i want to take a employee i need to calculate some salary all such a type of thing like a small project we will try to implement this is nothing but module 3 and we have module 4 is also there in the fourth module we are going to focus on object oriented programming sir this is a very very important concept what we have so more concentration should be given for this why because so it is not that much easy to understand oops concept sir more real time scenarios we need to understand why because in the real time in the real time we have to use these type of concepts only sir example a simple example i want to tell i want to read some student data i want to store that data in the database so immediately in our mind we will get so we have to take a name and a hall ticket number of the student assume these are the two properties sir if i want to read for 100 students how many name variable we have to take 100 name variables we have to take so 100 hall ticket number variables we have to take which is a very difficult task so i will create a template in that template i will store that name and then hall ticket number for this template if you create a student 1 you can create a student 2 student 1 contains a separate hall ticket number name student 2 contains hall ticket number name so you can deal only with the data where is the format format will be there here so such a type of a format or i can say template these things are nothing but what object oriented principles inside that reusability concept polymorphism abstraction n encapsulation n number of things will be there all these things we are going to see around 50 projects are there oh, sorry 50 topics are there are you seeing here i told we are going to cover one mini project in this we will use only scripting scripting means normal code we will use and functional programming we will use sir same project i am going to take here without functions by using object oriented programming how you can get advantage that we are going to discuss this is nothing but fourth module after first module we are going to give next level priority to this module 4 because this is very very important especially the people who wants to go for next level applications like maybe data science or web frameworks like django flask rest api for them this is nothing but most useful concept next and after that as a part of this advanced python we are going to deal with this small four topics easy and important sir i have given a mobile number like 123 i can say it is not a mobile number why because only three digits are there so if user is giving such a type of data and that data is going to be submitted into the database so you can't see the program or you can't see every time what value user is giving automatically you will write a program or a script to read the number store it into this 
sir that number contains a proper format or not how you can check validations is the email id is valid email id or not is the bike registration number is valid registration number or not like if you want to do any validation even passwords validation everything we will prepare from here only now web scrapping i have a website is there from that i want to fetch the data for that we can use web scrapping exception handling sir i want to handle the runtime errors so during execution of the program suddenly there is an error so you can't give that product as it is to the client right why because a client can't see what will happen if i am giving different types of data at the time of execution only he is going to get the problems how you can able to solve such a type of things that is called as exception handling multi threading during execution of the program generally we will follow sequential flow first instruction second instruction third instruction like that if there is no dependency between the instructions you can execute parallelly that is called as multi threading how you can able to execute more than one task at a time so that will be covered under module 5 so then after this last module utility module i can say it is a utility module where we are going to focus on where we are going to focus on file handling sir how to uh, write data in a permanent storage area database handling sir i have a data is there i want to push that data into database next logging module okay i have a logging module is there so how you can able to store log information okay next and after that pandas matplotlib these are these two are extra facilities what i am providing for this batch okay so this is nothing but what we have the total syllabus of python so after that we have data structures syllabus is also there of course maybe some terms you may aware but some terms may not it's so very simple arrays string data structures recursion backtracking divide and conquer dynamic programming greedy algorithms sorting searching hashing linked list stack queue trees binary trees okay binary search trees avl trees heap trees okay priority queue graph data structure these things we are going to provide so next and after that uh, you will receive running notes two running notes will be there one is for um, this python another one is for this uh, advanced python another one is for this data structures and you will receive a hacker rank link in that more than 100 programs will be there in addition to that i will give some assignments also assignments also i will provide so only assignment will be there you have to solve the problem so once if you solve then it is okay otherwise at the end of the course i will provide solutions for these assignments you can expect a minimum 10 questions so 10 advanced questions including data structures and interview questions also we are going to cover so it is it will be provided in the form of videos so we have more than 100 plus videos are there so i will provide these videos as a add on for this and recorded sessions will be given i mean whatever session we are taking that session is going to be recorded and we will give this only these recorded sessions you will have 6 months validity remaining things lifetime validity will be there this is nothing but what is our python course what we are going to cover sir if you are clear uh, with this if you are having sir, you, any, yeah yeah please this, uh, sir can you please paste this whole syllabus into this chat box so that we can yeah. copy yeah yeah sure now anyone having doubt means you can feel free to ask your doubts sir next new batch will be start after 2 months right this same ah, yes sir yes sir same course ah same course it means in which month ah uh, sir we can't give guarantee but definitely once if this batch got completed or parallelly uh, after one month or like that we may start okay okay sir any any other questions uh hello sir yes. uh, you, will you be um, taking libraries of python like you mentioned uh, pandas and matplotlib uh, 
uh, are you going to cover some other libraries which are important like numpy or something or uh, sir maybe... maybe if time permits definitely sir okay uh, or, but, or else you can but... just give us a basic if 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 at all ah, the ah, time ah, doesn't ah. permits even maybe, then maybe can you maybe okay. one one hour one hour or two hour session i will take on numpy and uh, pandas okay sir okay thank you so much there is this sir. class starting tomorrow uh, the full sessions are like from next no, week already already started sir uh, today itself i am going to start the syllabus hmm. but today and tomorrow you can attend without paying the fee but from next week onwards if you want to continue you need to pay the fee and today hmm. and tomorrow no 3 hours or 4 hours like that around 1 and 1/2 hour session will be there okay so daily it is of 3 hours from the next week right ah yes sir 3 hours Uh, sir don't stick on exactly for 3 hours it may take up to 3 and 1/2 hours also because it depends on the content see completely if i am taking the session also you people are going to get bored right so meanwhile we will give some break okay some interesting questions we are going to solve something like puzzles some okay so doubts clarification everything will be there you can expect 3 and 1/2 hour complete session you will get and so how long this course is i mean what is the duration of this course uh sir seven weekends will be there plus or minus one sir in the march you take the batch of only dsa using python but this cover course cover that also everything of uh, ah, yes DSA. yes whatever dsa is there we are going to cover the total thing you can oh. see okay sir so in that batch the problem is the people who don't know anything about python they are immediately joining so for me to explain the concepts uh, it's become very difficult that's why so we announced a batch where both will come with less price okay so i will join the next batch sir because now there is they are teaching machine learning so okay okay no problem okay sir hmm, right uh, so are we covering flask module in advanced python no sir no sir in advanced python only these topics like exception handling multi threading web scrapping regular expressions in detail flask module uh under this um, rest api django these are frameworks that is different okay so just curious to know that in model 4 oops mm. concept okay so mm. if you whatever we will teach you is more than enough i don't need to refer anything uh, apart from this in ah, future no need no need no need no need if i will do it thoroughly whatever you are going to teach is more than enough yes more enough. than more than sufficient for this module 4 and module 3 whatever i am taking is a complete concepts we are going to cover S- frankly speaking this complete python if you learn from this session no need to refer any new concepts suppose if any new features are coming you can refresh that's all okay sir and sir about notes uh, running notes we can take whatever you are telling that will be more than enough or any printed notes that uh, you will provide. not required not required see i don't have any material for this why because from batch to batch i am taking some more examples so in the initial days i have taken small small programs now i am not taking that small programs i am i am moving to the next level so these things will change right batch to batch mm-hmm. that's why i don't have a standard material i will share this running notes as it is for you it is sufficient if you want you can convert this into word or pdf and you can take a print out sure sir sir and i'm um, kind of targeting data engineer roles and uh... uh these things so this will be helpful right yeah Probably. definitely sir definitely definitely it is going to be helpful sir one more thing whatever i am telling just uh, coming to the class attending the class and listening keep on going that is not correct actually so you hmm. need to put more practice whatever session i am taking you have one week time right so if i am hmm. taking saturday sunday so monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday five days you are free at hmm. least spend some one hour Two hours to revise the concepts and to practice the programs, whatever I am telling, so that automatically you will get interest. Okay. okay. Once if you practice more, no need to recall that. Just you can refer one or two times, twice in a month like that. Okay. Okay. Oh. And how many project projects will we? Ah, uh, projects in the sense it is something like a mini project, sir. Not that much executable projects. We will cover in every topic. Some projects will be there, so that. uh you can analyze where we can use the concepts whatever you have you learned understanding mm-hmm. my point yeah. so project means suppose i have this requirement 
how to solve this requirement it is not based on a single concept we have to take multiple concepts into that that is called as a project right like we are going to think how you can able to develop the projects step by step that's why in every topic i will try to include some interesting concepts inserting inserting uh, sorry interesting programs that will be called as a mini projects here okay okay so where will we practicing all this program uh, sir i will I will, uh, I will i will show you uh, we have online tools are there and uh, these assignment programs and all i will give hacker rank links my customized hacker rank uh, uh, thing is there so i will share that links there you can do uh, sir i just wanted to add one more thing uh, whenever you are taking the classes on on weekends maybe mm -hmm. after the week uh, after that uh, um, course whatever you are completing on that day i will will you be sharing any assignments do, for for us to solve that assignment during the week for the, those particular topics yes definitely you, sir definitely okay and that's and what i told maybe we can discuss it maybe on the next weekend whatever top mm, uh, assignments mm. are there and we can uh, just yes. correct ourselves mm, yeah sure sure okay sir okay so sir i i will be definitely joining the course uh, 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 but i just wanted to make sure that yeah uh, uh, by doing this course i will be uh, end to end uh, able to uh, develop the codes in the python uh, language yeah sure sure sir sure sir 100% okay. Okay, sir. And one more thing, see, I will share some Word document with the uh, assignment, assignment links. I am going to share a Word document. In this, I am going to update the links. Okay, hacker rank links will be there. Hacker rank links. Okay, so I will explain the problem statement generally. Then, how to solve that problem, I will give a link. Don't refer any internet or uh, don't take help from any resources. Try to solve by yourself. So once if you are not getting after one or two days, then you can refer it because in the internet, everything will be available. So copy pasting that thing is not good. Okay. So at the learning stage, you should be like a kid. You need to learn each and everything. Don't copy paste. If you are not getting, then later anyway, I will explain or you can refer the internet also. But first try by yourself. Okay. So I'm giving these 100 plus programs topic wise and also these assignments also. These are very, very important. The person who can solve these two, happily they can place in any company, especially the people who are in final year or pre-final year, for them, these two lines, like 96th line, 97th line, these two are going to be give benefit like anything. Any other questions? Sir, yes, after sir. completing this course, uh, uh, what ex what kind of experience can we show it to uh, the companies? Like maybe two years or something. Or uh, it... sir, you can you can keep two years. Uh, with respect to the subject, you can you can expect a hundred percent from this course, sir. But apart okay. from that, maybe you need to give some kind of experience certificates like that because that we won't provide, right? Actually, actually, yes, sir. I do. I am already a um, candidate who is working currently. Okay. So, so I have. Um, ah, yeah, you can. You can nine take years that. of experience, but uh, but if I because I don't have this Python language expertise, so mm -hmm. I cannot show the experience. So by learning this course, uh, can I put that? I yeah, have sure, sir. Sure, 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 sure. Okay, 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 sure. Yeah, sir, I have a question. I'm actually uh, a DevOps engineer and uh, also in cloud, cloud engineer. So I'd like to know how uh, this training is going to help me uh, to automate different uh, daily tasks on AWS or Azure as a DevOps engineer or cloud engineer. Is this a right syllabus for me? Yes, sir. Uh, but for you to enter into cloud or uh, DevOps environment, definitely Python basics must be required. That is also yes. one path where we are going to use Python. See, once if you learn Python, you have three to four options are there. One is nothing but you can go with the testing also. You can go with uh, these cloud-based technologies also there, AWS. In all these things also, we are using this. And the third one is you can go for web, web designing also, like uh, uh, web-related frameworks are there, like a Flask or uh, uh, REST API, Django. By using this, you can go with the web development uh, side also. And even data engineer, data science, data analyst. analyst okay. So you have uh, AI, ML. So many things are there for all these things. 
Python is the basic, sir. Okay. Okay. Is is a uh, lam lambda function part of the syllabus? Lambda function. Ah, uh, lambda functions will be there, sir. Uh, that will be covered okay. in functional programming, sir. Okay. Okay. Then. Okay. Minimum okay. some ten to fifteen programs. Uh, I am going to explain around ten to fifteen programs. I am giving as an assignment for you, especially by using these lambda functions. Yes, because yes. that is very very important nowadays in Java as well as in Python. So it is yes. just reducing the code, sir. If you have to write a program, uh, for finding or, or some program, if you assume some X program, you need to write six to seven lines of code. By using lambda functions, you can reduce that to one line. That is advantage. But how to write that lambda functions? We will spend some half an hour on that. Okay. Okay, because we use so, it a lot in a. Yes, 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 yes. In everywhere, it is very famous nowadays. I will explain, sir, definitely. So, what about the logging function, actually? Sir, which one? Logging, logging, logger. Uh, sir, logging module is there, sir. Actually, yeah, 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 it, it is very, it is very easy, sir. Not that much difficult. See, in module six, whatever I am going to cover, we can finish within four hours. That much easy concept. Don't feel that it is very difficult. For everything, ready-made methods are there. Okay, if you want to write a log log information into the file, logging dot write immediately, you can put whatever message you want, date and time. Everything is inbuilt, and even here also, data structures. Everything is inbuilt. We are not required to worry to write the code because everything is a predefined. In these two modules, we can finish in one weekend. Why? Because that much easy. Everything is a function. Just we need to write the function. That's all. So just curious to know till for till module four how many weekends I mean you will take I mean, uh, sir first two module approximately I will tell but uh, that depends on the understanding capabilities of the students also right so mm -hmm. first two module we will spend more time I am expecting minimum two weeks we will spend on first module okay so second module and uh, uh, sixth module we will cover in one week okay so then. Third module, I will take in one weekend. Fourth module and the fifth module, rest of the weekends. And also parallelly data structures. Definitely, okay. it will be finished maximum by seven weekends, sir. If not, maybe plus one. That's all. Uh, sorry you can expect you, one, one second. Sir, it is nor something like a normal thing only, sir. So my regular classes will be having some two months duration. Same duration only here also. But maybe uh, I'm talking with respect to weekends, right? That's why I mentioned seven or eight. Okay. Yeah, please, sir. Go ahead. Uh, sir, I'm working as a GCP data engineer. Okay. So inside that GCP, like uh, working as a GCP data engineer, mostly uh, like we are working on like Cloud Composer as well as the Cloud Data Flow. Okay. And uh, in apart from this, uh, this uh, if I'm only talking about the Composer, means like Apache Airflow. So mm -hmm. inside that Apache Airflow, there is only operator kind of thing. But when we are uh, talking about the data flow inside like Apache Beam concept, mm -hmm. so there is need of data pipeline thing. So can like this thing will be coverable on this course or this skill, uh, like this course will be helpful for me to, you know, in my uh, GCP data engineering career. Sir, maybe I don't know regarding that particular area, but definitely uh, my old student is there uh, who raised the same problem. I think it will be helpful, sir. Okay, okay. So I don't know in detail okay. about the thing, whatever you told. So, but definitely it will be helpful. Sure, sir. Sure. Yeah. Can I start the cinema? Yes, sir. Uh, so, sir, one more thing. Uh, do we have a WhatsApp group or any group kind of thing where where we can uh, ask you doubts you know, during the weekdays? Let's say mm -hmm. if we are practicing anything and we are stuck in some issue or some errors or something uh, if we post it uh, will you be able to solve or will will the group people will able to help us also so in that way whatsapp group uh, will be there or will definitely 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 will be there sir okay sir once thank if you. the regular class started we will create a whatsapp group okay sir thank all you all the notifications will be pushed into that group only sure sure sir. okay sir Right, sir. I hope all your doubts got clarified. I will start. So today is our first class, right? So what I will do is I will I will solve some ten programs. Okay, I will I will try to solve some ten programs. Uh, you have to decide because some people may have knowledge on programming, 
some people they don't know anything about the programming so let me let me solve uh, some 10 programs so on completion of every two programs or three programs i will ask you one question so you have to tell answer for that is python is easy or not this is the question for every three questions i will ask why because you need to see what is the flow of program how it will be so is it difficult or not without you you don't have any idea about programming language first i am going with first program my first program is nothing but i want to write a python program i want to write a python program so to print our famous message like a hello world in every program a programming language i think this is the first program what we are going to do so python program to print a hello world message on the console console means a screen screen so whatever screen that we are viewing that is called as console sometimes you can write the information to file sometimes you can write the information to database this is also possible but as of now i am trying to write a program to print a hello world message on the console console how you can able to write this is my task very simple sir first we have to open a new file first we have to open a new file then we need to save the file go to save you can choose any uh, folder sir example in my local disk c every time i am trying to save the files in a folder called a test test folder is there in that i am going to save all my files either it may be java or python anything you can see i think there are already some python files are there you can see uh, have you observed avl tree.py so bstt.py these are linked list binary search tree avl tree like that we have different files are there so i will try to save a file with name demo.py this is my program sir what is that demo there demo is nothing but file name to identify that particular python file we have a demo file name is there and dot .py is the extension for file name so how to save the file just we have to give demo.py demo means what demo is nothing but file name demo is nothing but file name so dot .py is nothing but what extension extension sir which is giving what type of file it is sir can i use any other file name instead of demo yes happily you can use can i use any other extension no because you are writing python program compulsory you have to take dot py only now sir my program is ready you can write whatever instructions you need sir i am going to print a welcome message like something like i am printing hello world i think a kid can understand this statement sir print means what it is a function which is used to print something on the screen so print is nothing but a function which is used to print something on the screen so within double quotations i am giving some message called hello world so if you execute this python program this hello world is going to be printed on the screen sir beyond that nothing now i will run the program if you want to run the program, we need to take command prompt, sir. This is by default available in every operating system. And the people who are using any other operating system, their terminal, something like that, it will be there. So we need to open this command prompt. Inside this command prompt, sir, we have to enter into the folder where we saved our files. Sir, actually, we are in which drive? C drive. Users folder is there. Prakash folder is there. Now I need to come out from this. CD backslash. Sir, I want to change the directory to test. Why? Because I saved the files in test folder only. Let me check in this, what are the Python files that we have? Sir, are you seeing DAR? List out all the files which are having extension .py. There is AVL tree, BS tree. So CDL, circular double linked list, circular single linked list. Have you observed? This is our newly created file, right? demo.py which is taking some 22 bytes or something like that at 1044 we created on today's date now i want to run this how to run py space demo.py that's all a simple code what is a command that we have to use to run the python file py is the command once if you press enter what will happen that demo.py is going to execute and it will show you the output Sir, what is the output that we have? Hello world. It's a very simple program, right? Yes. This is nothing but what we have. Here, py is the command which is used to run your Python file. Sir, if you want to run this, 
definitely python software must be required 100 percent sir you need to download and you have to install python software then only we can prepare these kind of applications otherwise it is not possible this is nothing but what we have first to python program sir i think everyone got clarity also how to run the python file py space file name dot py don't worry again this procedure i will explain in the regular syllabus some concept is there like steps to execute python program there again i will demonstrate sir do you have any doubt in this program please confirm no sir clear friends please confirm everyone yes clear sir right now sir i will go for second program what is a second program is i want to perform addition of addition of two numbers i want to take two numbers and i want to add those two numbers how you can able to do sir i can say this is nothing but i am preparing version one first version of python program i mean for addition sir how to write code for this a very simple sir i am going to take a is equal to a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 c is equal to tell me what is the formula sir a plus b that's all very simple formula a plus b and directly we can print c that's all this is nothing but how you can able to execute a uh, addition of two numbers program you may have a doubt you may raise this doubt sir at the time of doing addition uh, i mean at the time of printing something like uh, so hello world so you mentioned this uh, hello world word within double quotations so by using this print function sir but whenever you are printing the value of c why you are not putting in double quotations anyone having reason for this anyone knows reason please confirm Yes, sir. Uh, it is a string which you are printing, and it okay. is a variable which are which we are which we uh, want to print it in the uh, console. Yeah. So okay, fine. I understood. But I will I will use one word, sir. It is nothing but I can say fixed value. It is nothing but a fixed value, and this one is nothing but a variable part. Variable part means what, sir? If you run second time, this output is hello world only. If you run third time, this output is hello world only. If you run 100 times also, this output is same. But if you run this program first time, maybe you will get 30. If you run second time, if there is a change in the data, you will get new output. If you run third time, new output. So because it is a variable, it is holding some value. Which value it is holding, that is depending on the previous calculation. That's why if you want to print any changeable content, you have to use like this. Don't keep any double quotation. Suppose if you are trying to print within double quotations, sir, what will happen? It will print every time the character called C instead of value. This is nothing but what we have. I think you got this point very well. Now, I am running the program. First time I am running, my output is 30. Second time I am running, 30. Third time I am running, 30 any number of times you can run so you are going to get 30 only sir why why it is not changing why it is not changing because the values for a and b are hard coded in the program in the program itself i have given that values okay in the program itself that value 10 and 20 got given that's why it is printing as it is sir can i change that yes during execution if we want, we can change that. I will show you how you can change that. Any doubt, friends, up to this? Clear, sir. No doubts. Now, sir, now my next scenario. I want to read. Same addition of two numbers program only I am going to take. I want to read two numbers from the user. I want to read two numbers from the user. Sir, how you can read for that? There is one special method is there. Special function is there like input. I will print a message. Enter A value. It will ask the user to enter A value. Then input of I am taking enter B value. Sir, we are reading the value of B. Now we are performing addition. Now listen, I am running the program. 
So I'm giving triple one and a triple two. Tell me what is the expected output? Triple three. Triple three. Am I right? Sir, everyone, please tell me what is the output that we are going to get? Triple three. Triple three. Right. Now, if you see the output is not a triple three, we are getting so triple one, triple two. Sir, why? What is the problem here? Whatever data you have given, okay, by default. whatever data that you are giving for input it will read in which format string format that's why a is equal to it is considering as a triple one and b is equal to it is considering as a triple two and whenever you are doing a plus b so triple one triple two concatenation string concatenation is happen not integer addition okay sir how we can convert how i can able to deal with integer are this value internal content is integer only right why can't you convert by using int function type casting you can convert by using int function how to do that very simple int of input int of input so that what will happen the given data is always in the form of a string we are converting that into integer and then we are storing inside a then we will perform addition operation this is nothing but what we have now if i run the program by giving triple one triple two our expected output will come now i am giving so 100 200 300 is going to come now i am giving 12 and then 15 7 27 like that what is the purpose of this int function which will convert the given data into integer format sir as of now in this third application you came across two functions one is input function which is used to read dynamic data from the user second point about input function is whatever data you are giving it will accept only in the form of string it will accept only in the form of string so what about the type casting function integer it is used to convert any type of data into integer don't worry about this input function about this integer function we will discuss in the fundamentals okay maybe tomorrow only we are going to talk about that okay this is what nothing but what, what is this program sir any doubt in this please confirm sir no type casting required for c is it ah no type casting because here itself we are doing right so a will be what type so tell me sir a is what type in type sir in b is what type in type sir if you do addition definitely result is also in type automatically tomorrow i am going to cover this here okay, uh, like other programming languages we are not required to declare like this yeah yeah automatically Actually, based on the type of value it will it will take that is there is one special feature is there in python i will show you tomorrow okay sir sir these are nothing but first three programs i explained up to this any doubts no sir yeah so you have to tell is python is easy or difficult up to this level easy sir easy yes. sir that is the reason why the people who don't have any programming language background also they are learning python and they are moving into it industry and in in the it industry also why there is huge demand for python in the sense because of this its easiness and no one knows that python is purely working for mathematical applications but majority of the students are feeling difficulty in math but here we are not using real math we are we have standard libraries are there that will take care so we are not required to worry with anything cartesian product matrix multiplication sir have you observed matrix multiplication minimum 10 lines of code we have to write yesterday i have taken this program for dsa with java people but in python this 10 lines is not required sir if you want to implement only one line is sufficient this is there in numpy numpy module we have this kind of facilities there so it is it is best to suitable for math applications okay right any doubts friends up to this clear yes sir now sir i will take the continuation of this program like i want to perform addition of two numbers only i want to perform addition of two numbers only but i want to print in a beautiful format like um, sir i want to print a value 
B value, C value. All these three things I want to print on the console. Sir, maybe print A is equal to the value of A we have to substitute. Comma, B is equal to the value of B we have to substitute. And result, or I can say addition is equal to, I want to take C. Sir, no programming language is providing this kind of facility. Maybe in the C language, we have percentage D, something like that. In Java, we have to use a plus operator. But in Python, we have a flexibility. Within double quotations, whatever you need to print, you can print as it is. But inside that double quotations, if anywhere I encountered flower brackets, I will see inside that flower bracket what is there. If you are taking A, in the entire program, what is the latest value of A, that value I will substitute. What is the latest value of B, that value I will substitute. So you are not required to worry at all. Something like it is a substitution or replacement. If you want to work with this, in front of this, we need to take F. F indicates format, formatted string. Can you please format this string? Means during execution, there are some flower brackets are there. Can you please replace that flower brackets with corresponding values like that? Now, if I run the code, I am giving so 15 and 16. Observe carefully. A is equal to 15. B is equal to 16. And addition is nothing but 31. Sir, very easy, right? Yes. This kind of nature is there in Python. So, if you take Java or, Py uh, or C language, we need to take percentage this and all. So, it is very easy when compared with that. Sir, do you have any doubt in this program? Please confirm. No, sir. No doubt. Everyone, please confirm. It's clear, sir. Right. Next. Sir, I want to go for next application. I want to go for next application. It is also addition only, sir. It is also addition only. But a small modification I will do. Addition of two numbers, version 4. See, whatever data you calculated, I want to store that data in a file. I want to store that data in a file. What I will do is, up to this same, I will create a new file pointer. FP is equal to, FP is equal to, I am creating a new file pointer, which is pointing to something like addition or today, today is nothing but a Saturday, Saturday.txt. I am taking this particular file. Okay. So now what will happen? So FP dot, can you please write whatever content is there here? Same thing you can take here. That's all. Now FP dot close. How many instructions we have taken? Only three. What this fifth line is going to do? It will open a file with name Saturday.txt in the current working folder. Which folder we are working? Test. In that folder, it will create a new file with name Saturday.txt. Then fp.write. It will write this entire string to that particular file. Then we are taking fp.close. Automatically, it will close that file. That's all. Now I want to run this. Sir, I am giving so 100, 200. Sir, we are getting output. Have you observed? No such file or directory. There is no file like that it is telling. We have to create the file. So if you want to create the file, we have to take the mode as a W. What is the meaning of this W? Write mode. We are trying to open the file in write mode. Now see, I am giving 100 and then 200. You can see, we got this result. Sir, is there any text file created in this particular folder? Definitely. There is a text file you can see in C drive. Test folder is there, right? So here we are going to see there is a text file with the name Saturday. If you open that, are you seeing A is equal to 100, B is equal to 100, 200 and addition is equal to 300. Like that, we injected the content. This is the way how you can able to write the information to the file. Of course, in detail about that, we will discuss in file handling. So up to this, do you have any doubt? Please confirm. Any doubt, friends? 
no sir is it clear for everyone yes yes sir right sir i want to run this program on my pc and execute it so how can i do this uh sir i think you need to install your uh, python uh, software in your machine then only it is possible so uh, sir can you take i mean tomorrow some time to help you on this actually yeah sure sure definitely sir okay. yeah so now uh, still i can cover five more programs that i will take tomorrow so sir i am going to start our regular class up to now whatever i have given is nothing but completely just to, to make sure that python is very easy just i have taken this particular content i think now you are feeling python is easy only no doubt right in that yes sir now so i will start the regular topic like data types you can see there are three star marks because that much important that much important so now we are going to start a topic sir tomorrow i will finish this topic also again i won't repeat this topic the people who wants to continue please make sure you need to put a full concentration on this i am not going to repeat this topics okay data types uh, anyone can you please tell me what is mean by data types sir with your words data type means what nature of data hmm so whenever you are preparing any application whenever you are preparing any application compulsory what type of data you are going to deal you need to mention what type of data you are going to deal compulsory you have to provide that is called as data type so i can say data type data type represents the type of data that we are using that we are using in our application the type of the data that we are using in our application sir will you accept this word hmm please confirm yes sir hmm now yes sir i have some example see i want to prepare one small project like uh, so student records i want to store some student records and i want to manipulate tell me sir what are the common things that we need to take whenever you are implementing student related program tell me a uh, name student id yes can i say student id is hall ticket number and yes. we have to take name then which year yeah. student is yeah. studying yes. which is semester, semester marks of the student okay marks of the student maybe percentage of the student grade of the student email id of the student mobile number city Real. where the student so state okay country okay country yes date of birth uh, date of date of birth hmm? so etc sir can you please tell me string what type of data you will choose is it numbers right yes numbers ah uh, uh, what about name sir string, string right. group of characters what about year it is also a number right number yes semester is also a number marks also a number right right sir what about percentage number number or fractional number fractional, fractional numbers i may say for example 78.56 like this it will be there so grade can i say it is a character character Yes. Why? Because A, B, C, like that only it will be there. Email ID? String. String. Mobile number? Number. <laughs> is it number or string? It is string basically, but. Ah, <laughs> uh, we should not take it as a numbers because yeah. no one is going to do addition, subtraction like that, right? Exactly. Sir. So we have to use a string format only because why I am specifically typing here is there is one concept is there like regular expressions. okay so we are feeling uh, we are handling with the help of strings easy to check whether the string is having exactly 10 characters or not is it beginning with the 9 or not like that we can check what about city it is also string right yeah. state is also string 
so country is also string date of birth date date but strictly speaking we don't have any date type we have to consider in the form of string only now okay. i want to take a note number 1 what is the first note e is sir by seeing these samples can you please tell me which is the most commonly used data here string hmm so in any application or in any project the most commonly the most commonly used object or data type data type is string sir sir this is the reason why in the programming if you are taking input why it is taking the data in the form of a string means this is the reason i think now you got clarity any doubt up to this no sir right sir up to this clear please confirm so that i will go for next uh yes sir we can next note number 2 very very important see what is second note is there is one programming language uh, uh, there is one uh, programming concept like statically typed programming language statically typed programming language in short form it is called as stpl statically typed programming language sir what is mean by this stpl very simple sir before before using any variable in the program before using any variable in the program so we have to declare we have to declare the type of the data we have to declare the type of the data in the program sir we have to declare the type of the data in the program then such type of such type of programming language is called as statically statically typed programming language such type of programming language is called as what statically typed programming language okay this is nothing but what we have sir example for this c language c++ java these are nothing but example for statically typed programming languages okay because if you take any program example i will take i want to perform addition of two numbers how the sample code will be inside main method you have to declare integer a comma integer b a is equal to 10 b is equal to 20 and c is equal to a plus b then we are going to print the value of c if you write like this also we will get error because c is holding integer type of data you need to mention by mistake in the place of 20 even if you take within double quotations also what will happen immediately it will raise an error because you told that it is holding only integer but you are giving string this type of programming languages are called as what statically typed programming languages any doubt up to this no sir is python is a statically typed programming language uh, no sir no why because in our previous programs yes. we never mentioned type Any right type yes sir then what what is this python python is dynamically typed programming language dynamically typed programming language dtpl so let me change the definition before using any variable in the program so we are not required we are not required to declare we are not required to declare the type of the data in the program so based on based on assigned value based on assigned value automatically automatically type will be considered type will be considered then such a type of programming languages are called as what dynamically dynamically typed programming languages example sir we have um python is there okay so perl programming language java script almost all the scripting languages will provide these type of facilities example a is equal to 100 b is equal to 200 okay so if you take c is equal to a plus b just now we have seen 
So if I'm printing C, what is the output that we will get 300? Sir, anywhere are you mentioned the type? No. In the same program, if you want, you can take like this also. A is equal to 1.1, B is equal to 123. If you if you print C by calculating C is equal to A plus B, what is the answer that we are going to get? 124.1. Understood, sir? Everyone got clarity about what is mean by statically typed programming languages and dynamically typed programming languages. Any doubt? No, sir. So, sir, if uh, because see, uh, in the second example, we have take, uh, we took 1.1, which is mm. a, a decimal or a float number, mm. and then we took integer, mm. then A plus B, C, uh, uh, why it is taken as 124.1 as a float? Um, maybe because because there are two two variables, right? One is int variable and one is a float variable. So see, it will it will always give the without loss of data. See, if you take 124, definitely loss is there, right? Right, correct. What is that loss? 0 0.1. 0 0.1. That is also very important, right? Exactly. Yes. Yes. Just I am explaining at the outline. But internally, what will happen that we will see in detail. Don't worry. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. In the operators, I will explain in detail about that. Right. So, sir, so, so, sir, sir, it is a precedence that it takes internally, maybe the Python. No, 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 no. Not precedence, not precedence. Uh, when you are adding the types, result is what type? If you take two integers, result type is what? If you take two Integers. floating points, result is what? If you take one yeah. into one float, what will be the result? All these okay. case studies we will see. Okay, sir. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, clear up to this. Sir, I have a question for you now. Tell me, is it required to learn what are the different types of data types available in Python? No need, right? Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> why, why we need to learn? Because it is providing, automatically it is taking the type. By declaring, there is no use. Then what is the need to learn? Right? Will you accept this statement? Uh, yes, sir, as of now. Yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> but as a programmer, as a programmer, we should know, we should know the types of, the types of data set. Uh, existed existed in Python. We need to see, right, because we are programmers. We need to see what are the different types of data types available. So can you guess total how many data types will be there in Python? At least just random guess numbers. Uh, so four to five, maybe. Mm, or... Four to five, very good. So the following are the 14 data types existed in Python, sir. How many data types are there? 14 data types are there. Sir, why 14? Because in Python, everything is treated as an object. Okay. Integer variable is not there. If you take a is equal to 10, so the experienced person is going to tell a is an object which is holding one integer value. But the people who are in uh, low level, they are going to tell, sir, a is the variable. Of course, because we are at very budding stage, we have to use it as a variable only. After completion of data types, we have to use the word called it is an object. Anyway, I will explain. First, I will give the list. The first data type is integer. Second data type is a float. Third data type is a complex. This is very, very important. There is no programming language in the world which provides support for complex numbers except Python. So you can imagine how much priority it is giving for mathematical applications. Boolean data type is there. String data type is there. Next, we have list data type is there. Then we have tuple data type is there. Then we have set data type is there. Uh, next, we have frozen. Frozen set is there. So next, we have um, uh, dictionary data type is there. Dictionary data type is there. Before that, byte array data type is there. Next, we have bytes data type is there. Next, we have dictionary then range so at last we have none these are nothing but 14 data types what we have in python so if you understand these 14 data types i can say 30 to 40 percent of python you can able to happily understand okay 
right any doubts friends up to this no sir everyone is clear sir can you please explain this sir before uh, point sir uh what is it madam which point can you please scroll up uh, yeah this one sir example ha uh, here uh, just we are declaring a is equal to 100 but we have not mentioned anywhere that a is going to store only integer value okay but in previous programming languages if you are storing some value into a compulsory you have to declare what type of data it is going to hold okay yes but here in python it is not required why because python is a dynamically typed programming language what is the value that you are giving automatically it will take that value best example we we should provide support for dynamic nature nowadays okay, okay. because if principal is there in front of principal our behavior will be different <laughs> okay so yeah. if you see hod hod behavior in front of hod our behavior will be different with the friends our behavior will be different like we need to adjust depending on the situation understood yeah such type of nature our python is providing whatever value you will assign happily it will accept it will consider automatically the type and it will store okay 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 sir yeah that's all about demo session friends